I'm the underdog with the heroic card. I'm Aaron Jones Jr. I have to keep pushing for my kids. If I give up, what's that leave them with? Nothing. I have to understand that it's bigger than me. That it's not about me when I wake up and go to work. It's not about me when I'm reading and educate myself. It's not about me when I'm practicing my speeches. It's not about me. It's about my family. Hey, 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 you're now tuned in to Underdog Talk. I'm your host, Eric Jones Jr., the underdog with the heroic heart. And I have conversations with successful underdogs. And today I have the Hope Coach, Miss Tan Tate. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And thank you for uh, coming on the show. Um, she's from Houston, Texas, where she thinks everything is better and bigger, something of that sort. That's what she said to me. I'm not sure. Whatever. I just wanted to do that. Yeah, everything is bigger and better and greater in the state of Texas. Yep, that's what she said. I don't necessarily know. But anyways, I just, I like to be a little fun. I like to have fun, even though these, through these conversations. But before we get into our conversation, uh, today's episode is brought to you by ChristianDewan.com. That's my clothing brand, me and my son. Uh, if you use the promo code Underdog Talk, you get 15% off. Underdog is spelled U-N-D-D-A-W-G. Talk, you get 15% off. It's Christian with a C. And the wine is spelled D E J U A N dot com. And that's how you will get sweatshirt, t shirt, hoodies, whatever. We got it on there. So we have the Hope Coach. And before you became the Hope Coach, what obstacle, what tragedy, what thing helped you turn into the Hope Coach? Right, and that's a great question. So thank you for asking. Before I became the Hope Coach, I encountered probably a parent's greatest tragedy, fear, thing that they don't want to go through. And that is in 2008, when my only daughter at the age of 20, she was killed tragically in a motorcycle accident. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's, I was talking to my friend and she wants to dive in because she lost her son and you know, she knows how people feel. And that's don't don't ever I don't ever want want that to happen to me. And if any parent doesn't want that to happen to them to lose their child. So you lose your daughter, your only child that that really had to. My, had, only, my only daughter, I do, only have, only daughter, I only daughter. do have an only son. So I was blessed with two. And so and my son, he's amazing, um, Joe. Um, but. You know, you know how you probably are about your son. I, I love how you talked about you guys' um, partnership and business. And so, you know, you know how it is, you know, um, the men on one side, the women on another side, you know, something like that. But we're not going to debate about that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we not because you just think you're right because you from Texas and whatever. Anywho, um, so when this happened, I, I know it just crushed your, your whole world, everything. Um, so... It, it punched you in the face. Life punched you in the, in the, probably in the gut. How did you bounce back? What was, what did you do? How did you get over that? Like, how did that work for you? Right. You know, it, it not only punched me in the face, in my gut, it tore, ripped my heart out. And I found myself in a very dark place. You know, you asked, how did I get over it? Um, I'm not. Is something you learn to live with and become successful in it. You know, I like that this is the underdog podcast show because grief and darkness almost took me out of here. And so, and how I was able to become resilient and bounce back, something showed up like it had never showed up before. And that was hope. Hope met me in my deepest despair because I went through a mental breakdown. I went through, I, I, I didn't know how to live again. But when hope showed up, it brought with it new opportunities. And that's, so for me, that's how I, I evolved into the Hope Coach because hope is also an acronym for me, helping others prevail every day. Cause that's what hope did for me. It allowed me to understand and kind of talk to me like, you know, I'm here to present you with 
a newness. What will you do with your newness? And when I got that message, I began to think about that. And I realized I became stuck because I wanted things to get back to the norm. I wanted things to get back to how they were. I wanted to live again like I used to, laugh again. But hope is all about newness. And in order to start moving again, I had to realize I needed to embrace my new norm. What am I going to do with this new thing? And because of that, other things evolved. I love it. I I, I, lo I love what you said. Hope came showing up at the door. And I think being an underdog and being born with a disability, like I had to have hope. Like I had to hope like these things will work out because if you don't have some type of hope, some type of belief that something's going to change, then nothing's going to change and you're going to be stuck there. And like you said, your your child, you lost your child. So part of your heart, you like, what the hell? What is going on? I don't know. Like I, mean, I was devastated. I did yeah. not know how to it was such such a traumatic experience. Um I happened to be in the hospital when this occurred. I was having some back problems, and I think it was all divine. Um because before they gave me the news. The, the, my medical team, my family alerted the uh, medical staff, and they decided to make a decision that they were going to drug me because they did not want me to go into cardiac arrest when I got the news. And it's so, you know, it's almost something that came out of a movie. Here in Houston, where everything is bigger and greater and larger in Texas, um, not every accident makes it to the local news, right? And I'm sure even in um, the great city of, I think you're, are you in Detroit? Is it Detroit? Wow. No, I'm in Indiana. Okay. I'm in Indiana. Okay. Okay. All the same, Detroit. No, nah, nah, you're not, no, nah, you're not going to, anyway, I'm going to let you keep going, but you're not going to disrespect Indiana like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so even in like Indiana, you know how not every um, accident makes the local news, but my daughter's accident was one of those horrendous type of accidents that it even made the local news. And so um, in order for me to even begin the process of dealing with the death, you know, the, the, the process that happens, um, they decided that they were going to drug me. And so um, and I, I remember when my, I was in the hospital, my son was in college um, and he had, and I'm, when he walked in the hospital room, I'm thinking, oh, he came to see me, not realizing that I had been already induced with the drug. And they told my son he had a small window of time before he could tell me before I would be out of it. And I vividly remember the look on his face and how he looked, but still not truly processing that it was a look of shock, a look of horror. And, you know, he walked up to me and he says, Mom, something bad happened last night. Something really bad happened last night. And I'm still, because I'm on this drug, you know, um, and, and he looked down at me. And he said, there was an accident. And my daughter's nickname was Luby. And he said, Luby was killed. And all I remember was just screaming. And now by this time, my family and everybody's at the hospital. And they tell me that they could hear me screaming all over the hospital. And that's how they knew that I had received the news. But I don't really recollect anything of that part up to the next seven days that I was in the hospital leading up to her celebration of life services. So when you talk about something that no parent wants to encounter, absolutely not. But I will tell you, the worst tragedy in my life has become my greatest triumph. And all of that started when hope showed up. And oftentimes I hear people say, well, I don't even know what hope is. I don't, need, I don't even know how to find hope. Because sometimes we got to go looking for hope. Because life has a way of putting us on this journey. It would throw you off your game. It will set you back. It will do a lot of things in life. And so oftentimes in my journey today, I hear people saying, 
I don't even know how to go and get hope. And so I always encourage people, who is it or what is it that kind of makes you feel good? No matter what you're going through, we kind of all have always have that one somebody we can go to or that one thing, whether it be food, whether it be music, whether it be TV, whether it be a, a movie. And for me, it was praise and worship. Because people used to tell me, you know, just pray about it. Talk to God. And I'm here. To, I'm going to keep it real. I was praying because I'm a believer. I was doing all that, but I wasn't getting anywhere. But when I began to listen to praise and worship, and I would listen to it sun up and sun down, it began to touch me and reach me and be the hope that I needed that I couldn't necessarily get from prayer or that I didn't necessarily get from talking to, you know, the spiritual advisors, you know, and it was kind of almost like this. And it began to open and open and open. And, I, and during this time, I'm also an advocate for getting the help that you need. Sometimes hope looks like a therapist. Sometimes hope can be a coach. It can be your mom, your dad, your children. It can be your passion. Whatever it is, you just need to uncover it and let it do its job. All you got to do is show up. And so through going through that process with praise and worship, seeking mental health, the help that I needed. And I'm not here to advocate and tell people, oh, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. I'm just sharing my journey, my story. I went on medication for a period. I spent some time in the mental hospital. I did what was needed to get me moving again. And oftentimes in, in, in my community, in my culture, some of the things that I did, you know, we just don't do. But I was dying. And there is nothing like dying and yet being alive. Mm. I was dying. So once I got the help that I needed, and I've always been an inspirational speaker. You know, I come from a family of singers, right? It was like um, my mom could sing, my dad could sing. I have uh, five brothers and sisters. Everybody can sing except for one somebody. Ah, uh, you. So mm -hmm. everything ain't bigger and better in Texas. If Hold on, let me tell you about it. Hold on, I knew you was going to go there. You fell right for the okie doke. I knew you was going to go there. So this one time, you know, throughout life, you know, I feel like I was cheated, right? You know, how did everybody else get it? Because, you know, when you got, you got come up with family singers, every time you encounter somebody and they know that you're a part of that, they be like, oh, I know you can sing. I know you can blow. <laughs> so, you know, and I kind of was mad with God about that for a minute. I'm just keeping it real. And I'm like, how could I not get what everybody else got? How, you know, kind of like, how dare you exclude me from my family legacy inheritance? And then one day when I was ready, God began to talk to me. And he's like, listen, how many times do you hear people say you always seem to know what to say? He said, how many times do you hear people say you have the ability through your words to make them feel better? How many times have you heard people say it's something about your voice? He said, look at here, you know, and I'm paraphrasing. So don't nobody go and get the Bible. No, don't come for me. I'm just saying, don't come for me. I'm just keeping it real. You know, he was like, how, so how can you try to charge me up when I, when I made you unique? I made you different. I chose you. I gave you the gift of spoken word. He, he says, and it's all through the vocal cords. So you still got it. You just got it extraordinary. In this situation, you know, they all got the same thing, but you got something different. Mm. Well, um, I'm just going to say I got that gift, too. So it ain't everything ain't just that big and bad in Texas. It happened over here in Indiana, too. But to um, what you, I just had to get that gift back since you said, you know, I, I got caught in jokes. I don't get caught in jokes. I got to come back. Um, but that's how I felt. Like, why was I born with short arms? Like, what? Like, come on, God. Like, then on my dad's side, everybody kind of tall. You know, I, I'm five six. Come on, God. What, what, what's going on? I'm a, I'm a teacher, right? I'm the mm -hmm. shortest male staff worker. So it's K through twelve. I'm a kindergarten teacher, but when we see the high schoolers, I'm 
like this. And I'm like, <laughs> you're right. But like he said, it's it's my voice. It's people love to hear me talk. People love mm-hmm. to be around me or whatever. And it's like I am an entertainer to a certain degree, and I'm just not a singer, even though I wish I could sing. I can harmonize the heck out of a song, but I can't sing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can rap. But I don't. Oh, well, yeah, bars, bars for bars. Okay, yeah. Man. yeah. But no, nah, um, so I understand what you where you were going with that. Like sometimes people don't realize, like you don't have to be like your mom, your dad, your granny, none of that. I was just mm-hmm. talking to the person before we were recording. Like sometimes when you uh oh well, we all went to college. Okay, well, that don't got nothing to do with me. Like, so mm-hmm. you gotta accept your gift. Like, yeah. so I want people to understand, accept your gift. Your gift looks different. Your gift started before your your daughter passing, but then it's like now it's like, oh, I get it. This sucks like mm-hmm. hell that that had to happen, but I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. And it's like sometimes it really does suck because you said it is is with you every day. Like right. me, right. me and having, I, yeah, it's it's with me. Handle, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. And how I handle that part is that I uncovered that there is always purpose in the pain. Sometimes we get caught up in the pain that we miss the purpose. But when you can grab hold to the purpose in the pain, you have to know because there is purpose, it's connected to the promises of God. And because of that, you will prevail. No, you may not look, sound, be, talk like everyone else, but in your own you, Y-O-U uniqueness, and with your own measure of hope, there is nothing that you cannot go through and come out on the other side better. This is probably the first time, and my daughter was killed in 2008, in 14 years, that I'm even able to articulate what took place without welling up, without the emotions coming in. And it's not because I'm over it. It's because I've learned the purpose in it. And the purpose is what drives me, the hope, helping others prevail every day. There are mothers and fathers daily dealing with grief. And it can consume you. So I hope through my journey, my story, that it inspires and motivates and encourages someone who may be stuck to say, okay, let me deal with my new norm. Find this season that I am now in and see what's the purpose in this pain. And the purpose in the pain is applicable to any life event that we may go through. Because sometimes when we talk about grief, it's always associated to a death. But the truth is, we grieve in many forms, in many ways, and your grief is your grief. And it's okay not to be okay. It's not okay to not get the help that you need. And so it is important that we gravitate to hope and understand that hope is about new. So if you sitting there hoping your ex come back, you may have the wrong type of hope. <laughs> if you sit there hoping you're going to get um, a promotion at your job, but you already know that the leadership team has kind of stifled you, your hope language needs to be changed. You need to become fluent in your hope language. And that is how you avoid becoming hopeless. I speak lightly mm. myself every day over myself the people that i'm connected with i speak life that is my hope language and once i got this you know a lot of times people talk about what's your love language you know are you fluent in spanish but my question is are you fluent in hope what is your hope language i i love i love that i love that had a hope language are you going to be hopeless and sometimes we do hope for the wrong stuff um mm-hmm. but i like what you said at the beginning it don't matter what you look like it don't matter how you dressed up it like your purpose is your purpose like i'm definitely me i'm me to the t like i don't care what you gotta say everybody ain't like jesus everybody ain't gonna like me like when you when you were talking earlier like i made a shirt that said it was it was like something i cussed 
the uh, I cuss, but I still and the words I cuss with I use when I pray or some some similar. Mm-hmm. People take it all. Oh, oh my God, I'm me. God, God don't. Me and God got this relationship. He, he understands where I'm coming from. It ain't for you to understand. And it's like when you figure that out, your hope is a little is different. Like, mm-hmm. like you see yourself because you know. Okay, like for me. I overcame having a disability, having over 16 surgeries. Life ain't that hard. You know, so it's like I know something's going to get better. I hope I'm like, all right, I know I know this. I'm going to get out of this situation. I just got to figure it out because you can't you can hope all you want to. But if ain't no action behind that hope, you're going to be hopeless. And so what she's saying is on point. But if you're listening and you're going through that, you got to have some action. And it's gonna be hard as hell. It's gonna be hard as hell when you're going through grief. Cause like I got a divorce. You grieve when you get a divorce. Cause it's like even though maybe whatever the situation, you you miss that. You might miss that for a little bit. You miss that family life or whatever. And it's like now I'm shit. I'm by myself. Oh my goodness, what am I supposed to do? The hope I have is like to be a better person. So when I'm in that next relationship, it's not the same. And then like like you said, like. Once you go over that big triumphant pain or whatever thing happens, everything else is easy. Yes. Once you know your, once you, you know, what's your why? Yep. You know, if you can connect your why to hope. And you said something that I want to make sure that our listeners, our viewers, our watchers get. That there's hope and then there has to be action. And that's why we talk about now faith. You know, I always say, you know, that even though know, even in the verse it says, you know, now faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. So everybody's always talking about, oh, I got my faith, I got my faith. Then there's another part that talks about faith without works is dead. And how it all comes full circle is what are you hoping for? Because what you're hoping for is going to activate that now faith. And now that you got your now faith, what actions align up to match what you were hoping for. I can't just hope I'm going to win the lottery. This is just an example. And I never go buy a ticket. Come on now. I, it, it's not going to work. You know, you know, now I'm putting, I'm putting my destiny in the hands of hoping somebody else gives me a ticket. And if it's the winning ticket, they going to come back and say, hey, that was my, you know, all that type of stuff, you know? So, yes, you have to be action-oriented. And, and, and then it's, yes, action starts in your mind. Because if you can think it, you can become it. If you can envision it, you can live it. So That's you right. have to be action-oriented. In my deepest, darkest places, I first realized I wanted to come out. I didn't want to be stuck in darkness anymore. I gravitated to hope. And then my actions aligned up with what I was hoping for. I went and sought professional medical help. I did the treatment that was necessary. And out of that, I uncovered the purpose and the pain. I started this journey. Um, of being, I started a walk in memory of my daughter. Um, I do a, a, a yearly walk. It's called, it used to be called the Walk of Faith because, you know, it's a journey, but now it's evolved into the Walk of Hope. So every year, first Saturday in June, because she was killed on June 1st, we do a Walk of Hope. We're in the communities and in cities across the United States, people are walking for hope. So when you come to walk, it's like, what are you hoping for? Because now we're doing action, right? Whatever you're hoping for, now we're going to walk it out in faith. And every step that you take today is a step that's activating action to help accomplish and achieve what you're hoping for. So bring it all to the walk. Bring your brokenness, bring your grief, bring whatever it is that you're dealing with. And we're gonna walk this thing out, <coughs> excuse me. And then you always get a swag bag that has tools and resources in it to help you along the way, to help you along 
your journey. And so that's how all, that's how I became the Hope Coach. I started walking it out, action. And then after that, in my uh, professional career, I was a performance coach. And so as I evolved, I went through the necessary certification training to become that life coach. And then after that, I said, okay, there's another level. I became the master certified life coach because a part of being hope, that's my brand, right? I got to live it. So every day I'm asking myself, who and how will I be hope to myself and to somebody else? Actions. My actions have to align with my brand. And then I became the whole coach. And out of that, you talked about some of the products of my brand, you know, the, my, my podcast show, my life skills show. I've written some books. I've written some um, planners and just a plethora of things. Started a 501c um, um, organization in memory of my daughter. So I really want to take a moment to talk to a mom who may be dealing with grief as it relates to the death of your child. Yes, they are no longer with us physical, but you have the ability to keep their legacy alive. Let hope show up to help encourage you uncover the purpose. Begin to think about how will I keep my son or my daughter's legacy alive? And see where your creativity and innovativeness will take you. Yes, you will live again. You will breathe again. You will smile again. You will love again. You will laugh again. The moment that you're in right now is not the end of your story. There is more to what it is you were placed here to do. And that's one way actions that we can help as we navigate through the sea of grief. Mm. I'm sorry if I was talking too much. I'm sorry. I didn't no, no, no. I um there's different kinds of episodes. There's episodes where I know to talk, keep it going, and there's episodes where I know to listen. Cause this this not this not about me. This is about mm-hmm. moms and dads and stuff like that. I was just having a conversation, like I can't wait to share the information with my friend so you can help her so she can do like what you're doing. That's what she wants mm-hmm. to do. So yeah. So I love it. Only thing I'm mad at myself because I had the screen where it was big and then I changed it. And now I see you got this beautiful background and I ain't <laughs> had it all the time because uh, I don't know what I was doing. I thought it was just all close up, but now I see it and I love your background. And I'm telling the last two people, y'all, y'all going to quit coming on here with these dope backgrounds. And I just got my, my little regular old hey, background. Because, you know, we talked about it earlier. That looks good on you. Yeah, because 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 you the backdrop, your story, yeah. your journey, what you're talking about, it is amazing, and I am so grateful for the connection. So no, we're not gonna stop coming, you know, and you gonna you gonna do you, and you look good over there, you know. I see your sunflowers, you know. I see you representing real well over there, you know. So hey, you yeah, know, that's you're not, that's you, you, listen, you're not gonna be all serious and help people and then try to roast on me. That's what we're not gonna do. <laughs> Well, you know, we keep it real here down yeah. in Texas, you know, the South, you know, yeah. we keep it real. But that was actually a toast, you know, but I get what you're saying, but that was actually a, a toast. But yeah. I'm just excited um, to be here. And, you know, you said something earlier. You said, I'm a teacher. Thank you for what you do for the children, because it's teachers like you who change the world globally. So thank you. My daughter, when she was young, she wanted to be a teacher. And so she came home excited. She was in elementary school. She came home excited when she realized, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. And she was so excited that we turned her bedroom into a classroom. Oh, that's dope. I, I might get a little emotional right now. But we turned her bedroom into a classroom. And on the blackboard, this little girl went up to the chalkboard and she wrote, all days are good. Some are just better. And when I read that, that changed me in that moment. From that moment on till now, 
I don't have bad days. All my days are good. Some are just better. And that is her legacy. And you may notice it, see it on the background, yeah, yeah. background right there. Because that's one way I keep her legacy alive. And everywhere I go, I impart that. You know, sometimes people be like, oh, I'm having a bad day. You know, how, not me. And if I'm having a challenging day, you will find that I will say, you can say, well, you know, how your day doing? All is well. Because I'm speaking hope and I'm speaking life over what I'm going through. All is well. All my days are good. Some are just better. And so, and that's how I live. And that's one of the messages of hope that I take globally to be able to empower people to know you don't have to stay stuck in a bad day. Make that moment a moment. Don't let it become 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 minutes, eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. Don't let that moment ruin the good of all the other time in the day. And even they tell me that even when I got the tragic news of my daughter, and I was telling you about praise and worship, that I begin to recite, I'm better, I'm wiser, I'm stronger. Because I had been listening to that song by Marvin Sapp. And it had, see, I was being prepared when you have a relationship with God. Like you say, you know, don't be always trying to check your relationship with God. Go check your own. Some people be nosy. They be all up in your business and stuff. Go on, go, go mind your own business over there. This is me and God right now. He know me. Hey, go on. on. And so I begin to say, I'm wiser, I'm better, I'm strong. They tell me as I was crying and screaming. I was still in between saying, I'm wiser, I'm better, and I'm stronger. And in the moments where I could be at myself, I was speaking and confessing, all my days are good, some are just better. All my days are good, some are just better. All my days are good, some are just better. Parents, your children oftentimes can be some of the best coaches. Mm -hmm. That day, my daughter coached me to not say I'm having a bad day, but to say all my days are good, some are just better. So mm -hmm. parents, allow your children to coach you, learn from them, grow with them, because that was a powerful moment. And I have people who tell me from all walks of life, who encountered that message and who grabbed hold to it. I had a, a person that was in the military up and up the ranks and how they would teach their um, the group that they were responsible for. And over here in this platoon or whatever it's called, all our days are good, some are just better. All our days are good, some are just better. I love and so that. I would hope, it is with great hope that our audience, listening audience, watching audience today, if nothing else I've said, that that would resonate with you, that all your days are good, some are just better. Don't make a moment a lifetime. Don't get stuck in anger. Don't get stuck in bitterness. Don't get stuck in grief. Don't get stuck in unhappiness. You know, all of the things that break us, childhood trauma, adult trauma, you know, road rage is so much is going on in the society in which we live today that we all can use a daily dose of hope. And that simple phrase, all days are good, some are just better. Go ahead and shoot yourself up with that. I, I love it. Like, so you kind of like wrapped everything up, like the quote. I'm not even going to ask you for a quote. We're going to leave it at that. Um, you've given tips, you've, you've helped, you've helped somebody going through grief. I, I know you have just from me sitting here and listening, um, to you. So I appreciate what you do. I appreciate, um, that you came on here and was able to share because I know some people need to hear what you had to say. I know hopefully they reach out to you after they listen because you can help them. And I love what you said, like about your daughter. She wrote that when she was a kid. Like it wasn't like 
It wasn't like, oh, it was something you remembered her by. No, that's something that she said as a kid. Mm-hmm. And like you said, your kids will coach you. Your kids will get your kids will get you together before anybody yeah. else. That's what you that's actually because mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we we listen to our we don't listen to our kids. We take maybe the context of what they say. Oh, they might have said a bad word or how they said it, or maybe you fellows did. But if you listen to it, oh, you they definitely will get you together. But mm-hmm. again, I appreciate you. Um, thank you so much. This was dope. This was even though um things in Indiana are bigger and better. Um, <laughs> people that live in Texas, it's nothing against you, it's just against her because she was trying to come for me a little bit, but we'll leave that. Um, um let people know how they can reach out to you and then give us a closing word. I don't know, you know, not, like a, not like a closing word at a black church where they say right. um, one five, closer, two closing, three closes. I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. And yeah. yes, everything is greater in Indiana as well. You know, I, I appreciate um, you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Absolutely. You can reach me on social media platforms at the T H E E Hope Coach One. You can catch me on my podcast, it's Tea Time with Tan. It's on all of the um, podcasting platforms. It's there. Um, on Saturdays, you can catch me over on Facebook, YouTube. LinkedIn and Twitter on the Hope Show Saturdays in Hopeville. And you can also reach me at 1 800 259 0277. And as I leave the Underdog Talk podcast show, I want to leave you with this. The greatest way you can become the best version of who you are supposed to be is to always remain coachable and teachable and remember all your days are good. Some are just better. And on that note, peace, one love.